Why are so many people overwhelmed with clutter? Disorganization is causing shame, suffering, friendships, time, money. People just like you wondering where and how to create an organized lifestyle. This podcast offers expert tips and solutions for your clutter obstacles. My name is Rachel CV, and this is the Organized Podcast. Hey, collectors, welcome to the Organized Podcast. I am your host, Rachel CV, and this is a new series of three, and I'm calling it Sorting Things Out. The first episode is for basic sorting. That's where we're at today. The second episode is what I call central sorting. And the last episode is going to be for master sorting. Now, you can use any of these methods in or out of order, depending on what feels right for you. If you're new to decluttering and organizing, I definitely suggest starting here with basic sorting. Make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper so that you can write some notes down. Now, the one thing that I've observed that my clients really struggle with when I'm in person with them is sorting. Uh, Even those who have great organizational ideas and they know how they want things really struggle with sorting. And sorting basically means decision making, right? So especially in a hoarding situation or a heavily cluttered situation, it can be really overwhelming, just any decision. I mean, where does someone begin? Where do you put your supplies? What supplies do you even need? I mean, what do you sort with? All of these questions can be very overwhelming. Now, early in the Organized podcast, several years ago, I had a series called Where Do I Begin? This is like an updated summary of that series. You might actually want to go back and listen to that because it was incredibly detailed. Um, and if you have heard it, especially if you've heard it recently, you might feel like I'm covering some of the same things, which collectors, you know, repetition is really amazing. Repetition is the key to mastery. So if you ever hear me repeat some things, a lot of the times I'm doing it intentionally. I want you to know these tools, like, you know, the back of your hand. So, you know, eventually you'll become a master sorter like me. And if you're new to the podcast or you haven't heard the older series, I really do hope that these basic methods are helpful for you. Even if you think you have basic sorting skills down, it's really good to listen to this as a refresher. Okay, basic sorting. I'll give you a situation. Let's say you're surrounded by books, clothing, paperwork, trash, bags, electronics, nothing in order, everything everywhere in disarray, total home entropy, as I like to call it, dishes are piled up, mails piled up, laundry is piled up. Where do you even begin? If you're not sure where to begin, the kitchen is always a great place. Low hanging fruit lives there. Trash, expired food, junk mail, things that you might easily be able to get rid of. Now, if you want to start somewhere else, that's great. I actually like that you have an idea of where you want to start. It's okay. You can still follow along. The kitchen is just a suggested place to start for those who don't know where to begin. What supplies will you need? You may or may not want to pause this episode and get your supplies or just write down what you need and then listen to this again. You're going to definitely need a Sharpie, some sort of marker. I love post-its or painter's tape. Trash and recycling bags. We're going to label those with our Post-its and Sharpies, we're going to label them really well so they don't get mixed up. 
And then two containers of your choice. Now, I personally like to use bankers boxes. They have handles, they're easy to carry, but it doesn't matter what kind of box, bin, or bag you use. Don't let that hold you up. These are just temporary containers for sorting. Nothing more, nothing less. They don't have to be fancy. They don't need to be perfect. They don't need a match. They don't need to have a, a matching lid even. I mean, just containing the decisions that you're making. <clears throat> because sorting, again, is really just about decision making. And this is basic sorting. And so you're able to make just some basic decisions, okay? Before you begin, and once you have all your supplies, double check that you have everything you need, your medication, your cell phone, with an asterisk for emergencies, water, snack, make sure you've gone to the bathroom. You don't want to get up. You want to limit unnecessary calls and social media during your sorting sessions. I repeat, limit or don't engage in unnecessary phone calls and social media during your sorting session. You will survive without Facebook or TikTok or Instagram for 30 minutes. I promise. And yes, 30 minutes. Some of you caught that. 30 minutes, that's all. Set a timer because that's all you're going to be sorting for at one time when you begin. 30 minutes a day is a great amount of time for someone that's beginning to sort. So you can set a timer. And once you're done sorting, you can get back to watching your social media reels or the news. Another very important thing is that you're comfortable. Yes, collectors, you actually deserve to be comfortable while you're sorting. Decluttering is a marathon, it's not a race. All that bending poorly and not lifting properly will end up hurting you and then you're not gonna wanna clean it all. It is very important that you're comfortable while you're decluttering. And sorting and getting organized shouldn't be a penance. This isn't some sort of punishment because you've been naughty and haven't cleaned up. It, it shouldn't be a painful or upsetting process. I've seen people slumped on the floor, twisted, sitting on their legs improperly where they're totally not comfortable, just angrily sorting things into boxes. I mean, this does not need to be you. It really should not be that upsetting a process that you're uncomfortable, I'm just saying. And I repeat, you do deserve to be comfortable when you sort. Your body will thank you later. If you're not easily distracted, it's okay to play music or have the TV going. Sorting and organizing should not feel like punishment. Sorting and organizing should not feel like punishment make yourself comfortable. So you're going to have your two containers. You're going to label one container. You can write directly on the container itself, or you can use a post-it or some painter's tape. One is going to be labeled keep. The next is going to be labeled donate. Now, like I said, you can write directly on the box or not. Don't let things like that hold you up. Okay, you're in the kitchen. You have your bags for trash and recycling. You've got your keep in your donate box. I suggest starting with items on the floor. This is just a safety suggestion, you know? So to begin sorting, things that you want to keep are going into the one box that you have labeled keep. And things that you don't want to keep are going to go into the other. Trash is going to go into the trash bag and recycling is going to go into the recycling bag. If you must compost, I'm, he I, I'm here in California, I get it. Do your thing. But you also have my permission to not compost and to not recycle just for this project or for today. 
you know, a lot of these things will hold you up. If you don't recycle, don't, don't start because I asked you to in this episode. I am a very environmentally conscious person, but my goal is to get you to get rid of stuff. Okay. I'm not here to teach you how to sort your trash. I just want you to get rid of it. That's my MO. <clears throat> so I like to start on the it- with items on the floor for safety reasons, but if you want to start on the counters, that's fine too. The refrigerator is a great place. You know, again, the basic goal here of the goal here of basic sorting is to separate what you want from what you don't want. It's just basic sorting. There's three categories. There's keep, there's donate and trash period. Okay. I mean, of course there are subcategories and, you know, I understand why this method sounds really scary. And some of you might call it like haphazard or cavalier, but this is basic sorting, baby. I mean, it's no more and no less. So I'm going to actually address some of those fears. Everything that's a keep is going to go into one box. Oh my gosh. What if you have a keep and it goes to your sister? What if it's a keep, but it goes into another room or area? What if it's a keep paper, a keep piece of cloth and a keep book all in the same box? Rachel, are you crazy? For a hoarding situation or someone just overwhelmed and starting out, the basic sorting system works well. This is a super common method that clean out companies use when doing a large clear out. It's basic, but I've seen it work wonders and it decreases clutter and allows people to work on their decision making skills. Now, it's not the way that I do most of my clean outs, but honestly, in an emergency, it's really the only way. And I've seen it be very helpful. Okay. Yes, people are left with boxes of miscellaneous keep items that they're going to have to sort through. Yes, that part isn't fun. I get it. I've actually gone through many of these boxes with people. However, when you look at the big picture and you look back, this basic sorting method has allowed a lot of people to get crucial home repairs, evade eviction, Uh, avoid landlord issues and much more. So it's a great method for safety type cleanups. If you're an organizer listening to this and you're just trying to make a home safe. Now, if you have issues with all items you don't want going into a box labeled donate, just label it something else, you know, label it, go away or out. You know, I know some of the things that you want to get rid of might go to some of these free sites like buy nothing or free cycle, or maybe you want to try and sell them. That's awesome. I get it. I want you to feel that cringe and throw them all into that same box label donate or whatever makes you feel good about it. This is basic sorting. The point of this method is to sort what you want from what you don't want. We'll get into more intricate sorting in the next couple of episodes. This is just basic sorting, nothing more, nothing less. Don't make it so complicated that you get stuck. And you can always resort them later. Right now, just keep making decisions. You know, write go away on the box instead of donate if that makes you feel better. And, and you know, here's another one that I just thought of um, on the fly. What about a maybe box, Rachel? Can I have a maybe box? People love their maybe boxes. I get it. But from what I've actually seen that a maybe box is usually a keep. I know this is, you know, I'm not trying to encourage you to keep anything, but when people have maybe boxes and I say, okay, let's take this maybe box and donate it all. People don't want to do that. You know, so until you've made a decision, keep or don't keep in this basic sorting session that you're having, just go ahead and put anything that's a maybe into keep because you clearly haven't decided to get rid of it just yet. So you're keeping it. 
um, having a maybe category gets really confusing. You know, sometimes it's helpful, but for the most part, people end up having to resort it anyway. And it's just an additional thing to sort. So honestly, for the sake of time, and because this is just basic sorting, baby, I'm going to say, put your maybes in the key. Okay. Once your key piles are addressed, you can have more scrutiny. And it's honestly, it's a lot easier to donate like a few leggings or a handful of leggings when you see 55 of them all together. Right. So take it easy. Don't make it complicated. Keep it simple. This is basic sorting. Let's keep it basic. No, maybe category for this episode collectors. Speaking of sorting things out, as most of you know, I've been sorting my own stuff out, kind of took a hiatus or sabbatical, I don't know what you want to call it, just from lots of things, not only the podcast, you know, and I've just been dealing with life challenges, a series of unfortunate events. Um, As you know, I'm a single mom a business owner with a pretty intense business. And that means that I just, I have very little time. Um, And as much as I absolutely love this podcast, it just has to be on the back burner when I'm stressed out. And for that, I do apologize. And yes, even life coaches get stressed out. Luckily, I have a lot of tools and things are working out for me and things are on the upward trajectory. So I'm happy about that. Um, I've received notes and messages from you all. Thank you all for being so supportive. And, you know, if you're in our private Facebook group, I've really tried my best to keep up and respond to questions and Thanks everyone for the support there. We just reached a hundred members and that activated our October challenge, which is the junk drawer. It's to clear out as many items in your junk drawer as possible. And I even posted my own junk drawer and it was like totally disorganized by my own standards. Right. And do I feel shame? Nope. Did I do anything and make it look better before I posted that picture? Nope. You know what? I haven't organized it for at least a year. And honestly, that being said, it looks great. So you can join in on the October junk drawer challenge by posting your junk drawer pictures and you'll win a 30 minute personalized, ask me anything about a space in your home. Thanks to those who have bought me coffees. This has been just a huge inspiration for this series. As you know, I do not monetize my podcast. I don't have advertisers. I don't know what YouTube does. I'm sorry about that. But, um, and I pay for all the hosting and software out of my pocket. So I really appreciate the folks who went on to the Buy Me Coffee website and helped me support our podcast. Another way we can support each other is for you to hire me as your personal coach. I just love being able to transform lives remotely. We work on your home, your clutter, your beliefs, your relationships, and we come up with custom solutions to help you live the life you've always dreamed of. The results have been phenomenal. You can schedule your complimentary clarity coaching call by emailing me directly at organize at gmail.com, or I'll have a link at the bottom of this episode. Lastly, be on the lookout for a collab that I'm doing with another like-minded organizer. I will definitely be releasing more details in the future. Next episode, we will be getting into central sorting. And this is where we're going to sort out items by room so they're easier to put away. Until next time, collectors, and remember, happiness is a place between too little and too much. Thank you for listening to the Horde Ganize podcast. Please make sure you're subscribed and join our Horde Ganize podcast Facebook page and get additional tips and challenges.